Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन बी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Tonight, economist warns of impact to tourism from a slowdown in the Australian economy. Challenges lie ahead for the new head of the Catholic Church. And wasting less food will help save the environment. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The slow growth of the Australian economy over the next couple of years is expected to affect Fiji's tourism industry. Visiting Australian economist Justin Smirk says there's still time for Fiji to make the necessary preparations so that when visitor numbers drop, tourism can strive on. Eleanor Thurangai View has more. Only 4% of Australians are travelling abroad come to Fiji, but they still make up the bulk of our tourism arrivals. According to Justin Smirk, Australia will be facing economic headwinds in the second half of this year, continuing into 2014. The Australian economy is going to be growing slower. Also, Australia's income growth, the rate of income, is actually slowing down a lot. So, whereas in the last decade, Australians have become quite relatively wealthy and lifted incomes and strong Australian dollar, that's all pulling back. With this projection, tourist arrivals from Australia and their spending are expected to drop. Now, what will this mean for Fiji? The natural growth you've got from Australia, from Australians coming to Fiji, I'm not saying it's going to end but not grow as fast over the next few years. So it's a, it's a tapering back. And so that's one where I see some risks around for Fiji that you know, could present growth risks that basically Australians won't, growth in, the, in their tourists won't be as fast. And those that are coming probably won't quite have as much money as they did in the past. According to Smirk, Fiji now needs to get smart, either capture more Australians or capture a more profitable market. There's opportunities for Fiji to grow in terms of its market share in Australia. And also it's got, got opportunities to grow market share in other countries. Yes, US and Europe are growing slowly and I don't think they're going to grow any faster. But you have such a small share of that market, the ability to carve out niches in those markets too is still there, still an opportunity. And the opportunities to grow in North Asia, and particularly Japan and China, are there. 52% of Fiji's tourist arrivals in the last 12 months were Australians. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. It may be a joyous occasion for Catholics around the country, but the ordination of a new Archbishop brings its own challenges. Outgoing Archbishop Petero Matada says his successor, Father Peter Loy, will need support from followers of the faith. Vosita Kotoi Wasawasa reports. Archbishop Petero Matada has served the church for 57 years and says Catholics around the country need to stand with the church now more than ever. The position is not for honor but for service. I pray that the graces of the sacrament of ordination will always inspire, remain with him and guide him as he shepherds God's people. Father Peter Loy says there is no denying that challenges lie ahead for him as he assumes the leadership of the church and its flock. I accepted the Pope's appointment, believing that this is God's call. I also believe that the appointment expresses the churches, the people of God's prayer and faith. This is the coat of arms for the Archbishop-elect. The cover bowl signifies the installation ritual of a Fijian chief, while the Mangi Mangi circle represents the world. The tambua symbolizes the Itauke community and is the most valuable cultural gift 
while the deer represents Fiji's Indian population depicting the victory of good over evil. We have the gospel on one side, we have the world on the other side. So the big challenge as church is how to bring these two together, how to understand the problems in the world in light of the sources of our faith. And for us Christians, it's the Bible and our tradition. Father Peter Loy says he is ready to lead the church in Fiji with the support of the church and its congregation. He will be ordained on Saturday. Wasita Kote Wansumasa, FBC News. Raki Raki Town Council Interim Administrator Seni Raiko has been suspended to allow independent investigations into alleged irregularities at the council. This has been confirmed by the local government ministry. Raiko's suspension has been effective since last Thursday. Local Government Acting Permanent Secretary Savirio Mbale Kanavir says the council will be managed by Ralulu Viriki Asawa, a retired principal auditor from the public service. On Monday, the Director of Local Government Iliane Maises told FBC News the issue was not for public consumption. Raiko has not been available for a comment. The ongoing negotiations on an economic partnership agreement with the European Union could have a major impact on the sugar industry. Fiji is set to lose its duty-free access to the EU if the interim EPA isn't ratified by next year. However, the Fiji Sugar Corporation remains confident. Following the European Parliament's decision to suspend access to countries that have failed to ratify the interim EPA agreement, Fiji is now under pressure. The FSC says this and the EU's review of its common agricultural policy, which includes sugar, could become an issue for exports if the quota system isn't extended. You won't know what your export levels are, so you can't actually plan ahead in terms of your capital investment, even in terms of just trying to set prices for farmers looking forward. So these are the areas that we really need to ensure that we get some certainty going forward. The International Sugar Organization says, although it has to be on neutral ground, these issues are being discussed. Obviously, in internal discussions, we raise these questions, you know, and try to get understanding. We can't enforce any decision on political level, but we can, with analysis, anal analyzing the situation, by giving arguments, you can do something which I call soft intervention. The EU is a major and important market for Fiji. As we've seen over the last few days, the European market or the European prices for sugar is, has got a huge premium as compared to the world market price. What we need to do is, as an industry, including Fiji Sugar Corporation, is actually become a lot smarter. Fiji is hoping for a five-year extension to the EU ACP quota system and is calling on the European Union to enter into negotiations with a sense of urgency following delays of over a decade. Christopher Chand. FBC News. Meanwhile, the International Sugar Organization has highlighted issues that will help improve the sugar industry in Fiji. Executive Director Dr. Peter Barron did, however, commend the work done locally to get the industry on proper footing. As Christopher Chan reports, the ISO is also encouraged by political developments. The ISO says for Fiji's sugar industry to tap into its full potential, five areas will need to be addressed including political stability and the land tenure system. Since 1987, Fiji unfortunately is sailing through a politically very rough sea, nourished by racial and political tensions. This caused a lot of harm to the economy, to tourism and to Fiji's international reputation. Dr. Barron says over the last few years, production and exports have declined slowly to almost half of what it used to be. To recover the old strengths and to tap the full potential, mainly five things are needed. First, political stability. Second, improved performance in field and factory. Third, improved harvest efforts and modern technology. The ISO is encouraged by developments both political and within the sugar industry, which have shown promising signs. The last two crushing seasons showed already an encouraging improvement, and the recent political developments are very promising and hopeful. Hosting the 43rd session of the International Sugar Council has not only renewed the confidence of the international community, but has also given the industry here a chance to lobby for support. Christopher Chand, FBC News.
Coming up, work begins on forming new laws to empower people with disabilities. Nisa mbulo binaka, oya wane kamanalangi, oni nandoro ngozi yao, mwena ziwa kina ruwe na visinga, mwena moni tikina baka rumbu, kena Radio Fiji wana ndome ibiti bongani vya nyanu. Na mwaka talengana vya ngona sasi vya ni, na tina kaloko na vya mbongi ni buki lulu. Kena vya mama ni walu, na vya mbongi ni baka ruwai, mwena mbuza ni walu, ninge na maka. Aki shadi hune wali hai, panch panch bichi honge. Panch panch? Panch panch. हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनू सुनते रहिए मिर्च एफएम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक वेलकम बैक यू वाचिंग एफबीसी न्यूज़ कंसल्टेशंस ऑन द ड्राफ्ट ऑफ द फीजी नेशनल काउंसिल फॉर डिसेबल पर्सन्स एक्ट वर हेल्ड इन सुवे टुडे as Api Salomidoka reports, representatives from special schools, the government and other agencies participated in the discussions. The Fiji National Council for Disabled Persons Act is being reviewed after 18 years. Today's consultations are part of a process to ensure the voices of disabled persons are heard. The situation that we have in Fiji, we don't have a, a, a disability uh, legislation as per se. So one of the things that our policy makers fail to put it together. The review has been conducted by the Goodwill Ambassador for Women, Nazat Shamim. The aim of the review is to bring the FNCDP Act in line with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But from what you are telling me, we should not give HIV AIDS a DNA provision here. Yes. Yeah. In other words, people with HIV AIDS still have to prove that they have this long term. Yes. ensure that we have a uh, qualification mechanism that really differentiates those who are truly uh, you know, qualifying under this criteria versus those that may have just got into the net that really should not be entertained. Dr. Yanua Nutawa says people with disability have always been ignored. For the last 10 or 15 years, uh, we, have to, we, we usually put disability at the backstage of everything. Uh, but now, uh, trying to make it uh, fair and equal uh, for persons with disability living in Fiji. The draft review will be submitted to the National Council for Disabled Persons before it is given to government. Afbi Salome Voka, FBC News. Fijians waste a lot of food, which in turn puts stress on the environment. This explains the theme for this year's World Environment Day. As Ritika Pratap reports, the message is to reduce waste. Think, eat, save, reduce your footprint. That's the message that the Environment Department is trying to send to the people. Due to the large amount of wastage, natural resources continue to be put under pressure. One third of our food produced globally are just uh, dumped as waste. And uh, when, we, when we say one third, uh, this is a significant amount. Wasted food isn't unique to Fiji. But we are in a better position to help Mother Nature with good practice. Fijians still continue to ignore basic litter laws. Fiji's littering uh, habit, it's, it's really bad. And, uh, and I think as, as the voice of the government today, uh, we need to work hand in hand. We as a whole of Fiji population. David Tanivalu aids Fijians shouldn't expect someone else to care for the environment if they can't be responsible enough to clean up their own mess. As humans, uh, we rely on these living things uh, to, for us to gain our livelihood from. Uh, a good example, which, which is oxygen. We rely on these trees to absorb carbon and release oxygen, which is giving us life. There is enough plastic produced every year to circle the earth seven times, yet people aren't deterred. Our bad habits, as small as they may be, are taking a massive toll on the environment. So let's waste less and put that rubbish in the bin. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. 
The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority is sending its top guns to the Fiji Institute of Accountants Congress this weekend. Senior managers will be attending and making on-the-spot decisions with regard to unsettled tax issues. Mika Longa reports. FERCA regards accountants as their biggest clients. They're almost here every day uh, in big numbers, eh? uh, querying uh, certain transactions. Most of the taxes are being dealt with middle and lower management, uh, and that's why it's taking long. But uh, this weekend's Congress, uh, why it's important that all decision makers are making decisions right on the spot. So we're so glad that um, uh, FERCA bringing the senior management team to man the booth. Issues that accountants want resolved are the application of tax laws and practice, particularly on double tax treaties, prompt responses to correspondence and the need to have simpler tax laws. The interpretation differs when they deal with the different offices. So um, what we ask in FERCA during our meeting is we need to have a clear understanding of the application of those laws. Eh? I agree with the sentiments expressed by the, by the president of the steel accountants. Eh? Um, and th this is the whole challenge of doing our rewrite income tax decree. Eh? We want really a, a law that is uh, very simple uh, to show that the, uh, the interpretation issue uh, will not arise in the future. Eh? With 765 members, the Fiji Institute of Accountants Congress will focus on the challenges local and foreign investors are facing now as well in the future. The introduction of the new constitution um, and the new company's law, the income tax rewrite as the uh, CEO has mentioned. So these are all the challenges that the business will need to embrace. Yeah? The two-day Fiji Institute of Accountants Congress will be held at Nandi's Sheraton Resort. Mikolonga, FBC News. That time again, Jamie joins us now with the latest. What's big tonight? Thanks, Jackie. Well, we've got news on a former flying Fijian who's joined a rival team. And Fiji FA boss joins the big leagues. All the details after the break. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Isambul binaka, pada anggota di sini dalai, nama kita mana wasi nengon baru takina lali nekabi, mana tolu kita bitu, ena moni tinggal nampak rombuka, ena bola FM, nampak dua ena seri. Welcome back, you with FBC Sports. Former baby flying Fijian prop Alex Hodgman will be wearing different colours in this year's Junior World Championship in France. Come tomorrow morning, the Canterbury-based Thor Timber will be playing against his Fijian brothers at Loose Head for New Zealand. He was instrumental for the Fiji under-20s last year when they played against the Kiwis but lost 33-12. Fiji coach Bill Ngandolo also named his side. And apart from Hodgman, the only other Fijian to return this year is current inside centre Sevanaya Ngalala for Fiji. The baby flying Fijians are geared up for a good showing in the tournament opener against the Kiwis at 6.45 a.m. tomorrow. Banube Tambaka Thoro has proven once again to be the fastest man in the Pacific. He's broken the 200-meter record in the Oceania Championship in Tahiti, clocking a new time of 21.08 seconds. The 21-year-old beat Papua New Guinea rival Nelson Stone to shave off 0.1 of a second off his old record, which he set at the 2011 Pacific Games. Tambakao Thoro is left to run the 100-meter final. Meanwhile, Fiji final sprint queen Cecilia Sevula did not qualify for the final of the 200 meters after finishing in eighth place in a heat. Fiji Football Association President Rajesh Patel has joined the Audit and Compliance Committee of football's governing body, FIFA. Patel joins other Pacific representatives who bring an Oceania flavor to the judicial bodies of FIFA. FFA solicitor Samuel Ram was elected to the Appeals Committee. Other Oceania appointments include New Caledonian President uh, Edmund Bowen and Tonga Football President Lord Veahala to the Disciplinary Committee alongside Norman George of Cook Islands. The Fiji Under-19 cricket team carry the nation's hope of making it to the World Cup competition. But first, the team has to win the East Asia Pacific Championships in Australia next month. Shelvin Chan reports. The selectors have named a very young side for the East Asia Championship with an average age of 17. 
According to Cricket Fiji, these players are the future. We want to build a squad leading into 2015 for our senior, senior squad where you know, we want to create depth you know, in our pool of players so that it makes selection difficult for us. Um, but the whole purpose behind it obviously is to try and play the best cricket we can, gain a place into the World Cup. Fiji has not fared well at regional championships, but this time around, there is an air of optimism. In terms of underage cricket, you know, our under-19 side has struggled against Vanuatu, but we will say, you know, we will take one back and say that our under-70s did well yes, last year against a strong comp uh, competition with both Vanuatu and, uh, P and PNG and finished second behind PNG. So, you know, we, we got the, in underage cricket, we've got the momentum going through into that with that uh, heads up. So uh, it's just about maintaining it and keeping these boys uh, fit on the ground and uh, playing hard uh, competitive cricket. The youths are in top shape and have been together for some time now. This, the team believes, will help them in Australia. I hope that uh, the boys will do well and I have trusted the boys in how we have prepared. Uh, we have prepared in the last uh, few months and I believe the boys that we can we do best. With. The East Asia Championships start next month and these youngsters have a little over a month to prepare for what could be their best chance at playing at a World Cup. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. The 2013 Fiji Golf Open Championship starts tomorrow. With the launch tonight at the Fiji Golf Club in Watuanga, Suva organizers are hoping for smooth sailing over the next four days. Talin Daudakadaka reports. Putting in the final touches before the Fiji Golf Club hosts one of its biggest tournaments of the year, organizers and golfers alike are keen to get on the green. There is a good lineup of local professionals and also the amateurs that have uh, invented this uh, 2013 uh, Open. Uh, we have uh, local boys like uh, Tuibuna boys, they're quite good and we, you know, we're all obviously looking at good performance from these four days of championship golf. Eh? The tournament is expected to see 150 golfers compete for the top prizes and officials are hoping that the locals will be a par above the rest. This year, I guess the uh, local golfers in the professional category are going to be very tough to beat. Uh, namely, Vikran Chandra, who has just turned uh, professional last year. He was the top amateur golfer in the country for the last two years. And we also have Tomasi Tivuna, who finished third last year at the Fiji Open. So these two guys should really be good. And they should give the foreigners, uh, overseas players, a run for their money this time around. Last year's winner, Ryan Fox, the son of All Black legend, Grant Fox is back again and expects some tough competition. There's, there's still a few good players up here this year. Um, I think I'm travelling with five, there's five Kiwi boys up here and well, that I'm travelling with and they're all good players and there's a couple of locals that I played with Tomasi last year and he's a very good player as well so there's definitely some good players that can have their name on the trophy this year. Officials are hoping that good weather prevails over the next four days so that we can see some top flight golf. Talento da Kavaka, FBC Sports. The South Pacific Bowling Championships continue today with the fours event at the Silver Bowling Club. The first round of the men's and women's event was held today. The competition continues with the finals tomorrow and the singles events to be held over the weekend. That's your Wednesday night sports. Thank you for joining me. It's uh, back to business now. Back to Jackie now for business. <laughs> Silver Central Building in the heart of the capital city has been rebranded as the BSP Central Building. It will be the flagship BSP branch after the bank bought 50% interest in BSP Life, one of the joint owners of the multi-story building. The other owners are the Mortibai Group of Companies. Last night saw the building unveiling its new name. BSP PG says it always wanted to own a landmark building in Suva, and this was a well-placed investment opportunity. Commerce Minister Ayasaid Kayum said this type of venture will see good returns. What this demonstrates is that you could have private family-owned companies forming a joint venture uh, with life insurance companies or banks. And I think that is really the way to go. If you look at many of the uh, new JVs or uh, partnerships that are being developed, particularly in investment, investment of this uh, size, it is always good to have that sort of relationship, it's a symbiotic relationship between the private sector and the financial institution. 
BSP Life Insurance will also be housed in the BSP Central Building. Time for, weather. Time for the weather girl now. So, Jen, any good news? You have to be the judge of that, Jackie. Looking at the map, it was fine conditions for most places, but we did see a few showers in the capital around midday. Other centers had some cloudy intervals. Today's temperature sees two major centers at 31 degrees and another two centers sitting on the highest at 33. Tomorrow's weather is what we often refer to as a mixed bag, meaning there's going to be some rain and there's going to be some sun. So hopefully it's a win-win situation for everybody. And it's the stunning beach at the Shangri-La Fijian Resort that we're visiting tonight. Hmm, hopefully I'm not in the way, or at least imagining that we are. Many thanks to Pravinesh Prasad of Singatoka for sending this in. A beautiful sunset, beautifully captured. That was weather. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, stay safe, stay camera happy, and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And a quick look at the headlines. Economist warns of impact to tourism from a slowdown in the Australian economy. Archbishop-elect Father Peter Loy Chong says challenges lie ahead for him and wasting less food will help save the environment. That's the message on World Environment Day. Time for the FBC opinion poll and the question is, can Fiji win the Pacific Nations Cup? To answer, as always, visit our FBC website. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news tonight. See you tomorrow. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to The Morning Ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM, Today's Seat Music. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>